Hi, this is um, the tomato sauce Creole recipe that goes with the Cuisine Chef Sauce Lab. And in all honesty, this is the hardest sauce there is to make in this unit today that you guys are working on. And so if you got assigned this recipe, you obviously know what you're doing because this is, it just, it's not that it's super hard, there's just a lot of prep and a lot of ingredients involved in it. All right? So um, for the sauce lab, you're going to have a whole day to plan and prep all of your ingredients. So today, as you see me just throwing things in, like here's my mirepoix already ready to go, my bacon's already diced. You need to have all of this done for day one of the lab or else you will never get done. All right, so we're going to get started. And the first thing it says is render your bacon over medium heat. Render simply means cook it. Um, so we're going to, let me plug this in real quick. Okay, we are plugged in now. So it says medium heat. These uh, induction burners cook really fast. So I tend to keep things around seven, seven or eight. All right, so I'm going to throw my bacon in. And then I'm going to go wash my hands real quick, obviously because I have bacon fat all over them. But the bacon is already diced. You dice it before, which means it's going to cook very, very fast. So I will be back in just a moment. Okay, I'm back. And we are in the process of rendering our bacon. Now, the true definition of render means when this gummy white fat turns into grease. All right, so you can see a lot of it has. You see all that oil in there? All right, so we're going to go ahead and keep proceeding just because we don't want the bacon to be completely burned. It's getting nice and done here. So the next step says we're supposed to saute our mirepoix, okay, but we do not want it to brown. So we add this in. Now, just for a review, you should, uh, mirepoix, you learned about in Culinary Basics, is 25 by weight. It's 25% carrots, 25% celery, and 50% onion. We need uh, 6 ounces of mirepoix. So that means we need 3 ounces of onion, 1.5 ounces of carrots, and 1.5 ounces of celery. Alright, so we're going to continue cooking this until the vegetables start to soften, but they are not going to turn brown. And remember too, saute means cook in a small amount of fat, and we're using the fat from the bacon to saute our mirepoix. So we'll be okay, right Okay, our mirepoix is, um, the vegetables are sweating, they're getting nice and soft without um, turning brown. So what I'm going to do at this point is take this off the heat because I have to switch to a larger pot. And I'm turning the heat off while I get everything in here. You don't want to ever have the burner on an empty pan. All right? So the next thing we have to add, I'm going to go ahead and um, put these in here. Now, if you want, you can um, render your bacon and saute. Whoa, try not to make such a huge mess. You can render your bacon and saute your vegetables in this big stock pot to save yourself, you know, a dish to wash. Okay, so now we need to add our tomatoes, our puree. And again, um, even though this is the hardest recipe, you are going to be well rewarded for all of your work because this sauce is fabulous. You are going to absolutely love it. Okay, so there's our tomatoes and tomato puree. Then we're supposed to add our sachet. So just as a review on how to make a sachet, um, typically you would use cheesecloth, which is wide, widely woven and twine, and you did this in Culinary Basics, so this is a review. Um, if you don't have any, just any type of wide cloth will work. So um, one thing we need are crushed peppercorns. So I'm just gonna put the peppercorns here and crush them with the bottom of the uh, custard cup. And then this is the rest of my ingredients for the sachet. We have some parsley, garlic, bay leaf, and thyme. And I'm going to bring up all my corners here. All right, and kind of twist it to make it a little easier for me to tie. And again, um, if you have kitchen twine at home, that makes it much, much easier. That's kind of, it looks like kite string, so it's just a little firmer. But if you don't, this will work. And I'm going to tie a double knot. Now, with kitchen twine, you can keep a real long piece and tie it to the handle so it's easy to pull out. I'm just going to drop this in there because I can fish it out with a slotted spoon. And then we're supposed to add our salt and sugar. Now, a lot of people are surprised there's sugar 
in here. Sugar is in almost all tomato sauces, marinara and such. It helps cut the acid. Okay? And we need to add the stock and the bones, so give me just one second. I'm using some country ribs for our pork bones. All right, so we need about a half pound. Yeah, I'm going to break one of these because we have so much. Okay, so here's our pork bones. All right, and now we have to add our chicken stock. Okay. All right, so this is our chicken stock. We have made this with bouillon cubes, and so those are little yellow cubes, and you or little cubes of bouillon, and you add them to a cup of water per cube. So you just boil the water and add the cubes. Pour that in. Okay. Now, this has to cook for one to two hours. All right, so we are going to turn this on. All right. And it simmers slowly for one to two hours. So again, I'm partial to eight. So we're going to let this get up to right before boiling. Now, obviously, you're going, uh, class will be over when this is done. Um, your teacher will instruct you how to handle the time situation. Um, your teacher will either put this in an ice bath for you and get it in the refrigerator, or she will have students assigned to come back in and take this off the heat, get it in an ice bath, and then get it in the fridge for day two. See you tomorrow. Okay, our tomato sauce here has been cooking for one and a half, almost two hours. So we're going to go ahead and move forward with this. So what we need to do is take out the sachet and the bones, or, and our meat. So I have a garbage can close by, or you can have a bowl right nearby to drop these into a bowl. But there's our sachet. And I'm going to get the rest of the chunks of uh, bone or meat out. Sometimes the meat falls off the bone as it's cooking because it becomes so tender. I see another piece of meat in there. Okay, that might be a little piece right there. All right, now, your recipe says to use an immersion blender to puree this sauce. Since this is a large amount of sauce, we are going to use a blender because the immersion blender would take quite a while. All right, so I am going to pour this in. And again, if you always pour towards yourself, you will see what you're doing. Right? And you need to be very careful because this will splatter. So I am going to do this in two uh, rounds. I don't want to fill this completely full of hot. And I'm going to pulse so I can control it. There we go. Now, if you see, that came all the way up. If I would have put all of that sauce in here, it would have come flying through the top. So you'll want to do this in a couple stages. And then you pour it through a strainer to remove any chunks of vegetables that might remain. So I'm going to let that drip while I puree the next amount. Okay. And again, I will start by pulsing. What you're going to do, you may have to lift this up or encourage it to go through, but we will be back as soon as this is run through the strainer. We got our tomato sauce through the strainer, and if it's having a really tough time going through the strainer, it's okay to just pour it in. Using the blender, it really purees all those vegetables, and they're so soft for cooking for so long, they puree really quick. Now, this is very hot, and you know from safety and sanitation, we cannot just put this in the refrigerator for tomorrow that will heat up your entire refrigerator and your perishables will spoil. So what we're going to do is put this in an ice bath and your teacher will have set up a sink full of ice and you will just set this in that ice to bring the temperature down to 70, which it must be down to 70 within two hours. And it'll actually do that pretty quick. And then you can cover this with saran wrap and put it in the refrigerator so that it continue dropping till 40. All right, I will see you. We are back for day two of the sauce lab. So you have to multitask here. What I've done is I already have my tomato sauce here reheating because it was in the fridge all night, all right? 
And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to saute the onion, celery, and garlic. So I've already heated up my oil. So I'm going to add the onion, celery, and garlic here and saute this. And again, saute is to cook in a small amount of fat until tender. So we will be back in a few minutes when our vegetables are nice. Our vegetables are sauteed, so now they get added back to the sauce. All right, so I'm going to put them all, and our sauce is nice and hot. It's all been reheated. Okay. So I'm going to stir those in. All right. And now we're also going to add to that one bay leaf and a pinch of thyme. So there's our pinch of thyme. All right. And now this has to simmer for 15 minutes. Now realize that bay leaf um, is going to infuse a lot of great flavor into the uh, sauce, but it stays whole. It doesn't get real soft and mushy. So after the 15 minutes, um, before you serve the sauce, you'll be pulling that bay leaf out of here. So just make sure your temperature's on low. I, I'm keeping it on two since it's not, it's already a hot sauce. And we will see you in 15 minutes. Okay, here we go. Our Creole sauce has simmered for 15 minutes. And so now what we're going to do is we are going to add our chopped green pepper and a dash of uh, hot sauce or Tabasco sauce. And now this is going to simmer for another 15 minutes. So we'll be back in about 10 or 12 minutes because at that time we will broil our shrimp to have with our hair. Our sauce is close to done. So what we're going to do now is broil our shrimp. So I've laid the shrimp out on a sheet pan with some parchment paper. And I'm going to put this in the convection oven. And it should only take one to two minutes. So we will be right back. We're back. Our shrimp's about done. So I'm going to grab that out of the uh, oven. All right, the first thing we need to do here is, um, you know your shrimp is done when it's pink. All right, so I can move these kind of over here. All right, so our shrimp is all done. You want to pull the bay leaf out of your sauce. So here's the bay leaf, so I'm just going to pull that out, and this just gets discarded. So there's different ways to present your sauce. You could put a spoonful of on here and just, you know, draw a line through it. I'm going to put some sauce in here, kind of like a shrimp cocktail type of approach. But again, you could also, you could lay the shrimp around it. You could hook the shrimps on here. There are many different ways to present this. And again, you could just paint the plate if you wanted with the sauce. And then your um, customers could, you know, kind of scoop it up off the plate like that. All right? Enjoy.